On January 11, 2017, a brawl broke out on the floor of Turkey's parliament over a constitutional reform bill, which would change the structure of government from a parliamentary democracy to a strong executive presidency. The bill is up for a popular vote on April 16th, and it's shaping up as a referendum on President Recep Tayyip Erdogan, whose Islamic leanings have put him at odds with many in Turkey's old political elite and civil society. Here's a look at his political career over the last two and a half decades. In March 1994, Mr. Erdogan is elected mayor of Istanbul. He bans alcohol sales in some of the city's cafes, which some of Turkey's political elite see as a sign that Mr. Erdogan wants to Islamicize society. Turkey's secularism is written into their constitution, but many welcome the changes. Four years later, he is convicted of inciting religious hatred because of a poem he read during a political rally. Mr. Erdogan serves four months in jail and is banned from holding office for life. In August 2001, Mr. Erdogan, along with political leaders and businessmen, formed the Justice and Development Party, AKP, or AK Party, with ambitious goals to open Turkey to Europe and the world. On November 3, 2002, the AK Party sweeps to victory in a national election, and in December, Turkey's parliament reverses the bans against Mr. Erdogan. A few months later, he enters parliament and is named the country's prime minister. In the next general election, on July 22, 2007, Mr. Erdogan's ruling AK Party dominates with 46% of the vote. The election hardens divides between Turkey's secular elite and the majority who are religious Muslims. On June 12, 2011, Mr. Erdogan and the AK Party win a third consecutive national election, strengthened by their social reforms and free market policies that have attracted record amounts of foreign investment. Another key to the AK Party's success is the close political relationship between the party and Turkish religious leader Fethullah Gulen. In October 2013, the AK Party overturns what's known as the headscarf ban that had prevented religiously observant women from attending university and taking jobs in the civil service. But later that year, prosecutors and judges leak a corruption investigation against four Turkish ministers and some Erdogan confidants, including his son, sparking widespread protests. Mr. Erdogan believes Fethullah Gulen is to blame for orchestrating the probe, and Erdogan starts official investigations against Gulen and his followers in Turkey. Mr. Erdogan and others say there is no merit to the corruption allegations against them, and the original investigation is quashed. In August 2014, Mr. Erdogan becomes Turkey's first popularly elected president, but his position is weakening. The AKP temporarily loses its parliamentary majority. Peace talks with the Kurdish rebels break down. Arab and Western fighters use Turkey as a gateway to join Islamic State and other groups. Terror attacks become more and more frequent. Syrian refugees pour over the border. The currency plummets. Then, on July 15, 2016, a military coup attempt shakes the country to its core. President Erdogan is seen as a rallying point for citizens against a violent right, but that unity is short-lived. Erdogan enacts a state of emergency. Tens of thousands of suspected coup sympathizers and political opponents are arrested. More than 150,000 Turks are summarily fired from jobs without evidence of wrongdoing. Turkey becomes the world's leading jailer of journalists, and the government closes 160 media outlets. This is where we are now as Turkey decides whether to centralize power in the executive branch and possibly allow Mr. Erdogan to rule for another decade. It's unclear what will happen if the referendum is rejected. Turkey's future hangs in the balance.